Meg Stanford Sharon. I am bringing you a cute little idea that you could use on any card. It doesn't matter if it's Christmas, if it's birthday, it doesn't matter. Um, you have seen this card before, and it was when I was doing my One Sheet Wonder um, uh, video and my blog post. So let's see what I do with it. This was one of the cards that I did on my One Sheet Wonder um, projects that I did. Um, I believe I posted everything on Saturday on my blog. Um, however, I just kept looking at this card and it was so pretty. And I'm like, this would make a beautiful gift card holder. So I want to share with you how you can add this pocket to any card that you've already made and create a gift card holder. Um, I just felt like this was like a gift with the bow. I mean, doesn't that look like a package? Let's make it together. So I have all my pieces ready. I want to teach you a little trick about using the photopolymer stamps. Um, I have shown this on another video, but I just wanted to, to kind of go through it again on this one since I'm using these. See how it keeps sticking to my fingers and my nails? The end of a pencil, the eraser, will help you line that up. I'm using the Stampin' Up! grid paper, and I just cut these, you know, they're real long. I just cut them to match my um, paper piercing mat because I need that for some cushion since I'm using photopolymer. I'm gonna scoot that over just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna take my clear block, pick everything up, and now I'm ready to stamp. I'm using Cherry Cobbler ink. And I'm just gonna stamp at the bottom. I like to stamp straight down, hold it for just a few seconds, and then lift straight up. I could have spaced it a little bit closer, but that's okay. My paper, I am using the Festive Farmhouse, and I loved this print. Now I wanna show you, I switched patterns, just so we'd have two examples. I'm gonna add some snail. This piece, by the way, whoops. So sometimes your snail gets away from you and kind of doubles back. If you take it apart and just get that going again um, so that you have stickiness there, I don't know, sometimes maybe you just, I get too crazy with my snail and I get ahead of the roll. I don't know why that does that, but anyway, it's an easy fix. The designer series paper is three inches by five and a half, and my cherry cobbler is five and a half by three and a quarter. And we're going to add our ribbon now. I love this. It's actually called um, Mary Merlot Copper. See how pretty it is? But I think it matches a lot of the reds, the cherry cobbler um, especially. So first I'm gonna tie a bow. If I just bring this through like this, let me just show you. I have copper on one side and Mary Merlot on the other. See how that's more coppery? So, I'm gonna fix that. I'm going to do a little twist in this part. So I'm just gonna twist it like that so that I have Mary Merlot on both sides. Get that tight. Sometimes you have to fiddle with the bows. Especially when it's two-sided to get it to do what you want. So now I have this issue, so we're just gonna pick that up over that. And I'm gonna cut this off.
We're gonna set that aside. And then I'm just gonna take and wrap my ribbon. And notice how I leave it on the bolt. Whenever I'm doing projects like this, I just find that it saves me on ribbon when I do that. So we're just gonna tap that there. We are gonna pop this up with some dimensionals. And do you remember my trick about the dimensionals? When you're pulling these off, if you'll just kind of bend it, let me show you. See how I bent it? And when I did, that little backing just comes right off of there. So fun. I'm ready to bring this back in. And I really wanna make sure my sides are lined up. We're gonna use a glue dot. Actually, I think I grabbed two. And we're going to add the bow. You could try to tie all of this in one swoop but I struggled with this being two-sided. I couldn't get it to work, so I just added the bow separately. I have already stamped and cut out, using the framelits, the little tag. So cute. I'm using Merry Christmas to All. So many sentiments in there. You could do the same design and change up everything and have different words. And then the framelits, you could have some big, like you could have a big Merry and then small Christmas, you know, with your stamp. Um, I love these framelits. That's what I use to cut that out with. All right, so now we have a piece of cherry cobbler for our gift card holder. And this measures five and a half by two inches. I'm gonna take a one and three quarter inch punch and I'm gonna eyeball where the middle is. I like to use tear and tape because um, I really want the, the gift card to stay there, you know, in the mail or whatever. I don't want it to shift around. I don't want it to come loose. The tear and tape is a good, strong, sturdy adhesive that will allow that to happen. I like to do a little burnishing with my bone folder, really get that adhesive to stick. And then I want to make sure that I have all my edges lined up before I place this down because that tear and tape is not coming off. So, grab my gift card. You can just pop that in. Has a little notch. Although you wouldn't have to do it because I left enough room to pull, but how cute is that gift? I just thought it was perfect. So thank you so much for watching. If I can help you with your purchase of the Merry Christmas to All bundle, please don't hesitate to let me know. Happy stamping, y'all. I know I can't wait to make more of those cards using that layout for some birthdays. All of my family lives in another state, including my nine grandchildren. I have five kids and uh, daughter and son-in-laws, so I have a big family. Uh, gift cards just make it easy because I don't live close to them, so that way they can get what they want and what they need. So I hope that you liked this card, and I hope that you will make your own gift card holders out of any card.